good evening. Hope everybody's had a very blessed Monday and Tuesday and the week's going good for everybody and uh, uh, just wrapping themselves up in the Lord and uh, just being excited about what God's doing in each one of our lives. And, you know, God always has, from the very beginning of time, had a had a plan for each and every one of us. And, I mean, we find in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament that before the foundations of the world, He done knew us and He had a plan. So, tonight we're going into God's plan, part four. And uh, uh, we're going to look at what is inside of us. You know, we look 90% of the time at the outward appearance. We look in the mirror, we see us, we we look at all of the flaws and the uh, characteristic traits that may be good, that may be bad, our faults, our failures, our accomplishments, and so forth, and all that. But really, our life is more than just what we've done. So you got your Bible. Why don't you go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, and we'll start out there. And we'll do a little bit of looking uh, different scripture. And in Romans chapter 8, it says in verse 10 and 11, And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Righteousness means right standing with God. In verse 11, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Now, if you caught that, you understand that when Jesus died, that it took the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of God, to resurrect Jesus' body. You know, you read where he said it is finished and he gave up the ghost. In other words, he died. Yet, that spirit that was in Jesus that brought him out of the grave is the same spirit that dwells in you and me. And we know that we live in a in a mortal body. This body, it is not going to heaven. Flesh and blood, the Bible says, flesh and blood shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. The real us that's inside of us will, if we've been born again. And it'll take the Spirit of God to transform us from a mortal, corruptible body, human, being to a immortal and incorruptible uh, human being. We will be transformed. You know, um, often people talk about, well, so-and-so passed away and they gained their wings. No, we will never be angels. Angels are ministers of God. They minister to God. They are ministers from God to help us. Angels minister to Jesus when he came out of the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights when he first started. That is what angels are for. They are not like what we will be or like Jesus is. And uh, uh, so, uh, so if we've got the Holy Spirit in us, let me take it a step farther. If that Spirit of God, because you've got, to, you've got to get this in your mind and in your heart, you've got, it's, it's got to transform into faith. 
because without faith it is impossible to please God, for he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, with that said, if you start understanding the power of God that is inside of you, then everything that Satan will throw at you to try and kill you, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And, and I know a lot of good people. Uh, that some of them, you know, when it comes to dying, I'm not afraid to die. I know when I take my last breath here, I'm going to be in the presence of the Lord God for eternity, never to be sick again. But in between here and that point, we're in a battle because we got a corruptible body. We got a, a you know, it, it's mortal. And but what we have inside of us is greater. Now, let's go to Ephesians chapter 1. If you remember, we've been, we've done most of the studies so far had been in Ephesians, and I'm going to go back over a couple of verses. In uh, verse 19, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power? You remember how uh, our last Bible study, I brought out the five different types of a power uh, that is uh, translated in, and of course that verse has four of them, and uh, uh, which is dunamis and uh, oh, oh my, my mind's just going blank right now, but it's all the power, and of course the last one of the five was exesia, which is um, uh, it should be translated as authority. Well, now, let's look here. Let's grab verse 20. When he wrought in Christ, which he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead, set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Verse 21. Far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And he hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Well, now, if we are born again, then we're part of the church. We're his body. He's over. He's given us. He has authority. And when we find out that we, because of what Jesus has done, he's also given us authority. And you have to recognize that you have that authority. What happened when Adam and Eve, but it, Adam was the principal one of the fall? What happened when Adam took of the forbidden fruit in of the middle of the garden? There was a separation. Adam lost his authority. He no longer had dominion over the earth, over the animals and everything. And uh, God didn't lose any power. Well, what happened was... Adam lost the channel of authority through God that God had given him to be able to uh, to have dominion over the earth that you read in Genesis chapter 1. And uh, so with that said, I want you to go back up to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28, and we want to look at verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, 
All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptize in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world, or the end of the age. And the amazing thing is that he gave all power, or all authority, had been given to him in heaven and in earth. Now, with that said, let me ask you this. Which had you rather have? Power or authority? <laughs> I want you to think about that. And as you're thinking about it, go to Luke chapter 10. Now, in Luke chapter 10, we're going to look at verse 19. He says, Behold, I give unto you power, and that power is authority, to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. Now, that power is uh, dunamis, you know, Dynamo, dynamite, that's that explosiveness. And so we have authority, but we also have power. And nothing by any means shall hurt you. Nothing. Praise God. If we can get that into our minds and our heart, can you understand that nothing can hurt us? That means sickness doesn't have no rule or reign over us, shouldn't control it. And tell me, listen, I, yeah, I take medicine, and I don't like taking medicine, and I don't like having problems with ringing in my ears or being hard of hearing. And I'm having to get this in, and I'm getting this word in, getting this word in, because sooner or later, I'm going to receive what belongs to me that God has blessed me with through his word when I activate my faith in God's word. Many years ago, um, or it would have been, it would have been over 20 years ago, uh, the company I was working for, Burris, they had went busted. And I actually was driving for a company that didn't exist. And I hauled all their lumber materials from Kentucky, uh, from Monticello, Kentucky, from Alcola, Tennessee, from uh, Lynchburg, Gladys, Brook Neal, and Galax. All their products I hauled all the way up to Bristol, Pennsylvania on the north side of Philadelphia. And I'd make two trips a week. And this one particular day, I was, it was probably about midday, and I was on the upper end of Maryland, on the interstate. And as I was going up through there, I had CB turned on, and somebody gave out a, a bear report, said there's a full-grown bear in the median at such and such mile mark. Well, I was just taking my time, running speed limit, wasn't trying to break my neck to get anywhere because uh, I knew that I had to be certain place, certain time, and knew how to do that. And what got me was, was that when I got into view of that state trooper and what I witnessed, God taught me a very valuable lesson. And I've never forgot it, and I've shared it many times in, during messages. But that trooper was not sitting in his car. And his car was facing northbound in the media. He was standing back behind the rear end of his car, facing traffic running 65, 70 mile an hour. And he had a radar gun. And I looked back, I looked in my 
side view mirror and I seen a car in the inside lane just a barrel. I mean, I knew that they were they were speeding. And I seen that trooper take a step into that lane where that oncoming car is and he pointed to that car and motioned for that car to pull over. Now, I'm thinking, he's crazy. And the Lord said, why? I said, Lord, to stand out into oncoming traffic that was speeding? And God said, he has authority. And I'm thinking, well, yeah, but Lord, that's a little bit risky right there. Isn't it? And the Lord said, no. Because if that driver did not stop, or if that driver had to hit him, then more police officers would arrive. Because they have authority to stop you. They have authority to write you a ticket for speeding if you're speeding or disobeying the law. They have that authority. And you may do something to that one person, but when you do, know that there's going to be more that's got authority that is coming after you. It will be like a manhunt if, if somebody had done something to that police officer. And, and as me and the Lord was having a conversation, and uh, the Lord says, I've given y'all authority. Talking about us Christians. He said, the problem is that nobody understands how to work in authority or how authority works. And I mean, it's just like today. We look there at, at people that's in authority. What we've seen over the last few years and everything, there is a disrespect for people that's in high office, presidency, whether I like the person or not, they're there. And we should give our support and pray for them to do God's will and do the right thing, not the wrong thing. But if we're disrespecting that office, when you study the word, then you're coming against God because he's the one that puts people in office. He does let things go on. And he is getting ready to come back. But we still, as Christians, ought to understand authority and have respect for authority. And when you don't respect authority, then you don't earn the right to have authority. And, and that's why the Lord says, there'll be a day when every tongue shall confess and every knee shall bow that Jesus Christ is Lord. And the atheists, they're going to be a believer. Don't mean they're going to heaven unless they get born again. And they'll have to do that while before he comes back for his people. And that's why today we see people, whether it's in church, out of church, when you do not respect authority, you only respect what you like. Then you're going to find out that you're going to have conflicts. And, uh, you know, I wish I'd received Jesus Christ and been faithful from him, with him from the time I was a young boy. But I didn't. 
and there was times that I didn't respect authority, but now I understand about the authority. And, uh, uh, and it's only through the grace of God and His mercy that uh, I was given one more opportunity to serve Him and to live for Him and to receive that grace and mercy. Jesus came that none should perish, but everyone have everlasting life. And to do that, if we learn how much, you know, it, it's sort of like when you uh, you read the Lord's Prayer, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us for thine art the power and deliver us forever. Amen. And then goes down. And starts talking if, uh, if uh, you've got hate or bitterness, forgive. Because if you can't forgive, then the Father can't forgive you. There's a lot of things there that we have to digest, we have to understand. And God is the ultimate authority. And if we'll walk in his authority, then there isn't a devil or demon that can do anything to us. They'll, they'll tremble at our presence because the Bible tells us that. Even the demons said, you know, we know Paul and we know Jesus, and but you guys, uh, uh, they didn't because they weren't born again. They were just trying to act like they knew God, and they didn't. But the true believer that knows that they've got the Holy Spirit of God inside of them, there is nothing that can stop them. Because the more that comes against them, the more they're going, Hallelujah, thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. And you will you will understand there will be times that you got to speak to whatever's coming against you. And just as Jesus did, he rebuked the winds. He rebuked certain things because he knew that it was demonic that was trying to disrupt everything. Well, when you understand that, you have that authority. I remember reading, um, uh, oh, uh, Lester Summerall. And he was in a place over, I think, in Africa. Uh, minister and everything and uh, he'd went into his bedroom to good bed and had the windows open for a breeze to come through and everything and so he got in bed and said all of a sudden there was a cold breeze come in and that bed started shaking and it literally shook all the way out into the middle of the floor and he said it scared him. Now he recognized that it's demonic and it scared him. And uh, finally, when he came to his senses, he said, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you get out of here right now. And all of a sudden, that cool spirit gone. And he, and he looked, and the bed was in the middle of the floor. And he thought, why should I have to put that bed back? And he went to the window, according to his biography, and said, you demonic spirit, you, can't, you move this bed, you get back in here and put that bed right back where it goes. And said, here come that cool spirit wind in and that bed shook all the way back into place and when it got back in place he said now you leave and don't come back and out the window that demonic spirit went you see he understood what it was to use God given authority against demonic spirits. With that said, 
we have to learn. We have to learn how to use God's word. That's why, like Romans chapter 12, verse 2, be not conformed to the world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect will unto God. God wants you to show him that you believe his word, that you believe that you've got authority because of him. It's yet to be seen what will happen. Now, with all that said and done, praise God, that power is inside of you. That exceeding great power is inside of you. The power, the authority to tread over serpents and scorpions, the demons and the, the ones that try to destroy you. And over the power of the enemy. In other words, the dynamite power to be able to just knock the devil clean out of water and nothing by any means shall hurt you. What hurts you? I tell you what, I got up this morning and I don't think they was they wasn't a muscle one on me. They wasn't a joint one on me that wasn't giving me a fit. And I got in the shower and I had the water a little bit on the warm side and I just, I thought, Lord, this feels so good. And, and, you know, through that, through getting in the Word, we should be overcomers to the things that try to hurt us. We should be wise as serpent, but harmless as dove. We should walk in the love and compassion of God. We should understand authority, and, underst and by understanding authority, respect authority, so that we can use the authority that God has given us. So that we aren't down here on the threshold of pain authority all the time, but we can move above it, you know, like Isaiah 40, 31 says, but they that mount up on wings, but they that wait upon the Lord shall mount up on wings as eagles, they shall run and not grow weary, they shall walk and not faint. In other words, when you mount up on wings as eagles, you're above the storm. So are you above the storm? Are you in the storm? Are you at the bottom really getting devastated by the storm. Well, start speaking God's authority and see if what happens. Because faith is what now? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen now. So, Tomorrow night, we'll continue on in God's plan. I hope that you got something out of this. And uh, if you got any questions, feel free to message me or call me, uh, text me. Be glad to uh, help in any way to get an understanding of God's Word. It is good. It is rich. It is just so refreshing when you get in that Word. When you're struggling, when you're going through a crisis or whatever, get in God's Word and see what He does for you. As always, if you've backslid on God or if you've got cold on God or you've got lukewarm on God or if you don't know God, today is the greatest day to get things right with Lord Jesus Christ. So let's just pray this simple prayer together. Father God, I come to you in the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I ask you, Lord, to fill me with the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that resurrected you, Jesus, from the grave. And, Lord, that that Spirit work through me for your honor and glory. And, Lord, I praise you and I thank you in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 
Well, God bless. I hope that everyone has a great night tonight. I know tomorrow night we have Bible study at 6.30. I also invite y'all to join us on Sunday mornings at 11 o'clock at Mountain Harvest Church out here in the Old Town section. We're at the, the forks of Greenville and Waterwheel Road. Uh, church is on Waterwheel. You just have to turn like going down to the boat landing. And uh, love to have you. And uh, need prayer, let us know. We'll pray for you. Until tomorrow evening, God bless. In Jesus' name.